Hello and welcome to Chapter 4 of my Call of the Armor 0% Growths Low Turn Count Playthrough. Chapter 4 is a watershed moment for this playthrough for many reasons, one of which is that it's the last chapter we get before Interlude 1, and it's also the last chapter where I don't really care about the long-term investment of any of the units in my party. Um, it's also the first Seize map in Call of the Armor. Call of the Armor has quite a few Seize maps, but one just hasn't shown up until now. It means I'm going to need to get Kuija herself, as well as at least one boss killer, up to the throne. The throne is in the top right section of this map, and Kuija starts in the bottom left. It's also the first map that has a split army, although you might have noticed I'm going to ignore this fact as soon as possible. Uh, so obviously Kuija needs to get over to the right side at some point, and originally my strat was to just go through the left side as normal, and then do a quick little rescue across to the right. And that was a five turn, but fellow LTC or Toffee pointed out to me that you can turn this map into a four turn by rescuing Kuija over immediately and doing a slightly more complex rescue chain to boost her forward that much quicker. Um, the five combat units that are helping me with this maneuver are all really essential. Uh, we have Fernandez here, who, with his access to lances and pretty high strength, can deal with this big nuisance of a mercenary. Philip can use the hammer and get rid of this armor knight blocking our path. That's really nice. Um, Killian, of course, does Killian things by forcing me to rig crits, but no one else can do it, so who am I to complain? Uh, William the Thief, a newcomer, has really high con, which is pretty nice as it allows him to take Kuija and give, him right, give her right over to Shea. Um, it's important to note that Noki actually cannot fly over the gaps in this map, so I couldn't have done something trickier where I do half of the left side and then bring her over afterwards. Uh, it's got to be right at the beginning or right at the end. Now, going into turn three, this is a really scary looking formation of enemies. Some really high density here, and it's definitely the sketchiest part of this clear. Um, the scariest enemies are definitely the Cavaliers. We have uh, the Heavy Spear Cavalier, which is a bit further away, and this Iron Blade Cavalier, which thankfully Shale can deal with. But the Heavy Spear Cavalier is the reason that we need to do this little formation around Kuija to keep her slightly safer than she otherwise would be. And of course, our combat units are kind of going to try and draw a little bit of enemy aggro away from Kuija, who unfortunately is going to be targeted by four enemies, and she's going to need to dodge two of them. Uh, if she dodged the first fighter there, then maybe some of the other enemies would have targeted Philip instead. Philip is really frail. And that would have been a little bit safer, but I managed to get two dodges on my first attempt, so I didn't really bother looking into that. What I did bother looking into is how we're going to kill this boss. Um, they're pretty dodgy. 73 hit is about the best we're going to get. And unfortunately, Shale can't double them, but that's where our good buddy Philip comes in. With his base 10 speed, he's one of the only units that can double this boss. And that'll open up our path to a 4 turn. One last thing we need to do before we seize is do William's other job, which is stealing this goddess icon. That'll be a nice 4,000 gold. Um, William definitely earned his keep with that. And 
without further ado, that'll be chapter 4 in 4 turns. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you for interlude 1.